Recently, a lot of people have been trying to solve the mystery of what this thing is as we wait for Help Wanted 2 which will feature its debut game heavily. The identity of the suit could very well have gigantic implications on the lower bottom for NAF, considering how Scott refused to reveal the identity of this animatronic. I think it's time I threw my hat into the ring, so let's find out together just what is up with that sister location spring lock. First things first, we need to do a quick run through of our possible candidates and then inspect the evidence that supports them being the true identity of the suspected spring lock suit. The candidates I've seen talked about the most are Funtime Chica, Fred Bear, an old mascot costume from Circus Baby's Pizza World, and a spring lock incarnation of the puppet. There is, of course, the haunting possibility that this suit is an entirely new character we have never seen before. But that doesn't really make for a good theory because you can neither prove nor disprove it to be the case, so I won't be discussing it here. Now that we have our Sussex lined up, let's take a look at the spring lock in question. It has a noticeably humanoid face structure with two oval eyes and a half circle mouth. It has face plates that can open up like a fun time, but it seems a lot less high tech than they are, with little tabs attaching the opening face plates to the rest of the head, rather than the flesh design of Baby and her bandmates. It's also important to note that the only part of the animatronic's head that can open up are specifically these frontal face plates. We should also keep in mind that it looks quite old. Baby also gives us some information regarding this animatronic. She states that it came from her old pizzeria, and she implies it was used, but not in the way intended by its creator because it was quote, too dangerous, and that it's only barely big enough for one person to fit inside. Funtime Chica's entire existence is rather frustrating, and not just because she looks ugly. The fact that she exists but was never incorporated into Ennard is just weird, and it implies she never had Remnant injected into her like the other Funtimes, as Henry doesn't lure her to the restaurant as he does with every other animatronic that he wants to burn. Her being the spring lock solves the mystery of where she was during sister location, but unfortunately not everything lines up. She's high tech, her face plays don't really match up fully, she seems comfortably roomy enough for the average person to fit inside, and also Baby's comment about her being too dangerous to be used by the OG creator standards don't make sense since William definitely created Funtime Chica and being dangerous was the point. Fredbear is next in line and he's an interesting one. Unlike other candidates on this list, we don't need to come up with a new hypothetical spring lock version of their character because Fredbear already is one. There are also a lot of people who say Fredbear works as being from Baby's old pizzeria because they theorize that Circus Babies used to be Fredbear's family diner. While I don't want to discount that idea, I do think it's more likely that Fredbear and Circus Babies were just connected to each other, but not actually the same building as seen on the sister location map. Putting that aside though, Fredbear is old, just like the mystery spring lock, but he doesn't have face plates like it does, at least not when we've seen him. Fredbear also works with Baby's comment about the spring lock's unintended use, since Henry created Fredbear and what it did was kill a child, something that he didn't intend to happen. And we know Fazbear deemed the spring locks too dangerous, just like Baby said. Most interestingly, if a revamp Fredbear with face plates is really the mystery spring lock, then that could very well explain what the heck Yendo is supposed to be. All in all, I think Fredbear being the mystery spring lock is a super interesting idea and not one that should be discounted even if it doesn't tick every single box. Next up is the idea that this spring lock is an old mascot costume from Fredbear's singing show that was later turned into a spring lock and used in Circus Babies. This theory was popularized by FNAF and it's an interesting premise, but I don't think I can say I believe it to be true. A lot of the evidence comes from concept art and I want to mention that while it's very cool that the mystery spring lock and these unused characters have a lot of similarities, it ultimately falls under the umbrella that the mystery spring lock is a character we've never seen before. Again, it's possible, but no one can prove that theory any more than I can disprove it. I can't say if they could barely fit a person or if they were used in an unintended way or any of the other details we know about the mystery spring lock. It just doesn't have any evidence that can't be deflected by these characters aren't real. The last suspect on our list is an older version of the puppet that's a spring lock. Let's look back at what we know about the mystery suit. The puppet's face matches up precisely with its oval eyes and half-circle mouth. The puppet is even the only canon suspect on this list that has a frontal face separated from the rest of its head, just like the mystery spring lock. It's also the only suspect on the list that one could describe as being barely big enough to fit a person. While these iterations of the puppet are unlikely to be the mystery spring lock, a version of it that has the same extremely iconic and unmistakable design elements of the puppet like its mask, its eyes shape, its mouth shape, and its remarkably thin body that could only barely fit a human would almost certainly carry over to any and all iterations of the puppet, even one we haven't seen before. It being a spring lock version of the puppet would even make it old enough to match the appearance of the mystery suit. The main problem with the spring lock puppet being the sister location suit is that it is once again a new iteration of character, one we haven't seen before. So even though we can make logical assumptions about its hypothetical design like its mask and body type, we can't say anything about its history, 
So everything Baby says about it being from her old pizzeria, or being used in a way unintended by the creator, can't apply or be proven to be true. So where does that leave us? Essentially, we have four suspects that all fail to check every single box. Some match up better than others, and there's one that I would even say is the most likely, but it's not exactly a perfect solution. However, there's a fifth candidate that I've neglected to mention this whole time. One with a humanoid face, oval eyes, and half-circle mouth. One with a connection to Baby and her old pizzeria. One that's extremely old. One created by a person who didn't want it to be used in the way that it was. One that he deemed too dangerous. One that's just barely big enough for a person to fit inside. One that isn't a new character or a hypothetical character, but one we've seen both in the ancient past and the recent present. That candidate is Ella. She has a humanoid face structure, oval eyes, and even half-circle mouth. In both continuities that she's been confirmed to exist in, she's depicted as a clown animatronic, and considering what we know about Circus Baby's Pizza World, it's not far-fetched to say that she might have been at that location at some point. She might have even been William's inspiration for Circus Baby. In the books, Ella was a doll made by Henry, and in the movies, we don't know who made her, but we do know she's a springlock. And even though she does look rather tiny in some shots of the movie, this behind-the-scenes shot shows that she's actually a lot bigger than she looked at those angles. From this image, I can say with confidence that I'd fit in there, but it'd probably be a tight squeeze. Back to her creation though, if Henry made her in the games just as he made her in the books, but this time rather than being a doll for Charlotte, who was made to be a spring-lock animatronic for a Fazbear location, it would make sense why it was never used the way it was intended to. Springlocks were deemed too dangerous after the crying child's death, so Ella not ever being worn as a springlock costume as the creator intended, fits. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that this is a flawless solution. Ella doesn't appear to really have faceplates in either continuities that she's been in, and even though she's not a new character by any means, she hasn't ever appeared in the games. I just wanted to point out a possible suspect that takes a lot of the boxes, and that I don't see many people talk about, despite how much a springlock is brought up nowadays. Hey, would you mind subscribing if you had a good time watching this video? I'd really appreciate it. Leave a comment if you did enjoy, and remember that I hold polls every week to decide my next video, and polls every day to look at what the fandom thinks about controversial topics about FNAF. Thanks for watching. Bye.